Okay, so now we're going to talk about word problems and integration. So it's more focused on what the integration is finding you. So explaining an integral in real world terms. If f of t represents the rate at which your 404k changes value over the month of January, what are the units of f of t dt and f of t dt? Okay, what's important here is that f of t represents a rate. So you need to make sure if your function, your original stripped down bare bones function represents a rate or not. Okay, so f of t is a rate and so it's the rate is going to be money over the month of January. So money per day. And notice that that's written as a rate money per day. So f of t is not money. f of t doesn't represent how much money you have in your account. It's the rate at which your 404k changes value. So dt, okay, well that's the change in the t and what I'm inputting here are my days. So that's going to be the change in days, not the change in money. The output is the money. The input is the day. You tell me the day, I'll tell you how much money um, it has increased or decreased. So your variable t is time. So that's your change in your days. t is days, but dt is the change in your days. So then f of t dt, so f of t, your output is your money. So your input is your days. So T, if I had asked for T, T would be the day. Okay. F of T is your money, how much money you have on that day. Okay. F of T is your money. Well, the function represents the money per day. So then what does from 1 to 31, the integral of f of t dt, okay? Once you put that integral in there, now you're talking about the total, and that's the important word today, the total change in value of 404k in January. The total change. So when it's all said and done, if that equaled 500, then you gained $500 that month. But it's going to have ups and downs because, again, a 404k is an investment. So that investment's going to vary. So the integral is the total change, all the ups and the downs. And maybe it all went up. Maybe it all went down. Um, so that value could be negative. You could have lost money. Okay. R of t. R of t represents the rate, okay, that's important. Don't glaze over that. R of t represents the rate at which your pizza changes temperature in a 475 degree Fahrenheit pizza oven five minutes after the pizza has been placed in the oven to cook. So notice the integral starts at five goes to 20, so we're cooking the pizza for 15 minutes. Pizza's going to be in there for 15 minutes. The oven's already been on for 5. So what does the integral from 5 to 20 of R of T represent? Now remember, R of T represents the rate at which your pizza changes temperature. So it is the total change in temp of pizza, not of the oven, it's the rate at which your pizza changes temperature. Because in a perfect world, the oven should stay put at 475. The pizza's gonna change temperature. Total change in the temperature of the pizza, but that's not it. From five minutes to 20 minutes. 
and that's just acknowledging your upper and your lower bound. Now, if you'll notice back in number one, we said in the month of January, because I went from day one to day 31, and that in the problem says over the month of January. So make sure you put your reference of time in there. Okay, number three. You and your friends are planning to buy a ticket for your favorite music group. If A of T represents the rate at which students are arriving to the ticket window, and P of T represents the rate at which they buy their tickets and enter the concert, then describe what the following represents. So the integral of A of T, the integral of P of T, and then no integral, but A of T minus P of T, and then the integral of A of T minus P of T dt. Okay, so A of T is the rate at which they're arriving to the ticket window, and P of T, they have bought their ticket and they're moving to the concert. So really it's about the line at the ticket window. So A of T is the rate at which they're arriving to the ticket window, and P of T is the rate at which they're leaving that line, because they have bought their ticket and they're moving on. Okay, and those are both rates. So the integral from 1 to 5 is the total number of students. Are these students? Total number, yeah, of students. Arriving to get in line, or total number of students getting in line. Getting in line, but now be particular about your time frame. Um, let's see, these are I am T right. Doesn't say what T is in. But since we're talking about arriving to a line and leaving the line, I'm gonna assume this is in terms of minutes. So I'm gonna say minutes and a better written out problem would it have told you that it was minutes. Now you didn't have to use the little inequalities. You could have said from one minute to five minutes. I was just trying to be succinct and quick. Okay. So if that's A of T, then what's P of T? It is the total number of students Uh, leaving the line from, yep, one to five minutes. Okay, now be careful here. A of T minus P of T. So we've got people coming in and people coming out. A of T minus P of T is not the number of students who would be in the line because A of T does not represent how many students are in the line and P of T does not represent the number of students who, are, who have left the line. A of T and P of T are rates. So A of T minus P of T is the rate at which the line now, you don't know if the line is increasing or decreasing because you don't know which one's bigger. Are they coming into the line at a higher rate than they're leaving the line, or are they leaving the line at a higher rate than they're coming into the line? So you don't know if the line is growing or shrinking. So we, we need to address that. So we're gonna, we're gonna say both. So it is the rate. That's the big thing is, this is the rate at which the line is either growing or shrinking. Now make sure you understand that you don't know if it's growing or shrinking because you don't know what these rates are. But guys, this number three, and we're going to do part D, but this number three is a fantastic and uh, well-loved by AP writers FRQ. They're making you interpret 
what these symbols are, what what these functions represent. And then they were going to ask, they're going to actually give you a function and actually ask you to actually find the value and then state what that value represents. So right now we're just in doing the interpreting part. Okay, so if this represents the rate at which the line is either growing or shrinking, so when we put an integral on it, now it is the total change in the length of the line. Um, from one to five minutes. It is the total change. We've got a rate in, a rate out. So C is the rate at which the line is either shrinking or growing. When you put that integral on there, now it is the total change. It's the total change in the length of the line. And the change is there because that the length of that line is changing. So after one to five minutes, you can tell me, well, the line just backed up, you know, 50 more people. So you tell me that 50 more people came in than left the line. It is the total change in the length of the line. So I hope this has helped make help you understand like what A of T is and what P of T is when they're rates. But remember, they could have defined A of T as the number of students in the line. And that's not what this is. A of T is defined as a rate. So just watch your wording. Um, let's see. If, if they had told you that A of T is the number of students, And I want to find out the total change in the number of students. I cannot do this. I have to, A of T has to be a rate. Well, how do you make something a rate in calculus? A rate of change. Well, that's the derivative. So that is the rate at which the number of students is changing. So if I want the total change in the number of students, then I need to do the integral of the derivative. So that is the same, same setup for number three, but I have defined A of T differently. A of T was not a rate. So I had to turn it into a rate by taking its derivative, and then I can integrate it because now it's a rate. All right. It says, describe the meaning of each integral expression in context of the given scenario. Okay, so these are all like sentence answers. It says, the function WT gives the number of water bottles produced. Okay, I am noticing an absence of the word rate. The function W of T gives the number of water bottles produced by a manufacturer by time t in hours, thank you, on any given day. I want the integral from 4 to 8 of w prime t dt. They put the prime there because we need to integrate a rate. And w of t was not a rate. So this is, now it's an integral, so you're going to, most of the time, you're going to start with the word total. It is the total number of water bottles produced from hour four to hour eight, or between four and eight hours, however you want to write that. Okay, I'm going to read it one more time. It is the total number of water bottles produced between hour four and hour eight on any given day. Okay, let's look at B. The amount of oil being drained from your pickup truck is decreasing at a rate of, okay, I see the word rate, 
R of T quarts per minute. Now, um, we're draining the oil from our pickup truck. T is in minutes. R is already a rate. Oh, and they told me what the answer is. Okay. So tell you what, pause me and see if you can write a sentence for this one. Okay, I have the total amount of oil drained from the truck decreased by half a quart. Now, it's the rate is decreasing. So the total amount of oil drained from the truck decreased by half a quart. The total amount of oil drained from the truck decreased by half a quart. Okay, look at C. Pause me. Go read C. Pay attention to the five in the front. Read C and see if you can kind of form a sentence. All right, Kevin got a gift of $500 from his grandparents for graduation. He deposited the gift into his college savings account. Kevin's savings account grows at a rate of, okay, R is a rate, um, hundreds of dollars. So if it's $500, then I'm going to have a five. Uh, where T is the month of the year. So we're going from one month to 12 months. Now you cannot assume that you're doing a calendar year. You don't know if this started in January. You're just going for a year. So don't say for the year, um, but it's over 12 months. It could have started in September. You don't know. All right, so he started with 500 bucks. So there's the five plus. And then it's going to grow at a rate of R of T for 12 months. And then when all that's said and done, he's got $2,400 in the bank. So here's my sentence. By the end of the 12th month, Kevin's account had a total of $2,400. By the end of the 12th month, Kevin's account had a total of $2,400. Make sure you're very comfortable with that five plus in the front. It's sort of like your initial value. I'm starting with $500 and then I'm going to increase at this rate. So if you think about this in terms of like a linear equation, the y equals mx plus b, the y-intercept is always your starting point. So that five plus, that's my starting value. All right, number five. The graph shows the rate in gallons per hour at which a storm water, at which storm water is being pumped from an overflow canal. Find the approximate number of gallons pumped from the canal during the 24 hour period. The problem is I don't have a function, but I do have points. I have a graph, I have points. The word approximate kind of tipped me off that this is going to be a Riemann sum, that I'm going to approximate the integral by using a Riemann sum because I don't have a function. I have nothing to integrate. Um, what I want to do is I want to integrate the function from 0 to 24, 24 hours, and I don't think, I don't know if you guys can see, but I think right here, it tells me that the function is r of t. I'm sorry if you can't see that. Vt. So that's what I want to find. That's going to be the total number of gallons um, pumped from the canal. The total number of gallons. Um, but I don't know what r of t is. So I'm going to use Riemann sums. And um, I'm going to use a trapezoid because I feel like that's the closest approximation um, possible. So I'm going to go a trap on these. And I gave you coordinates kind of so we could all um, have the same um, numbers because a lot of those dots you would just kind of have to ballpark it, estimate it. Um, okay, so trap is going to be one half. Um, the width 
for every one of these is four. So I'm going to put that out front. Okay, so a trap, just to remind you, um, I'm going to use that guy and then that guy. Um, and I'm going to add them together. And then I'm going to do that one and that one and add them together. And then I'm going to do that one and that one. So you guys remember when you do a trap, the all the middle bars get used twice. So um, just as this is a great refresher. Um, but you only use the ends once. So here we go. The height of the yellow one is 100 plus, And then I'm going to go two times the 125 because that one's going to get used twice. So are all of these. Um, plus two times his y value is 135 plus two times 130 plus two times 110 two times 85 and then plus a plain 65 because the ends only get used once. Okay, um, now I'm having a huge issue with um, people having the setup correct. Uh, but not being able to type it into your calculator. So please pause me, dig out your calculator, type this in. Let's make sure that we can finish this and get the correct answer. So Paul, I know you, you, I'm sure you feel like you can type this in just fine, but the first time you actually do this does not need to be on the test. Okay, so pause me, go type this in. always get in the habit of writing um, units of measurement. And this is the total number of gallons that is being pumped out over the 24 hour period. So 2,670 total gallons being pumped out of the uh, overflowing canal. All right. So now we're going to have, let's see, we're going to do two word problems that are calculator inactive, and then we're going to switch to calculator active, and they get real creative with their um, functions on the calculator active. So we're going to really make sure that we know how to type this into our calculator. Um, so six and seven are calculator inactive. Okay, so it says air is escaping from a balloon at a rate of that thing, cubic feet per minute, where T is measured in minutes how much air in cubic feet escaped during the first minute. Okay, so my time is in minutes. I want escape during the first minute. I do not have an initial value. So they're not saying, hey, 20 cubic feet have already escaped, that kind of thing. So we're starting at zero um, or with the amount of being zero. And my R of T is a rate. Okay, so here I go. The integral from zero to one. Again, no initial quality out here, quantity out here, because no air has escaped yet, okay? So this is where your initial value goes. Um, so I'm going from 0 to 1 because I'm doing the first minute of 61 plus t squared, dt. Don't forget your dt. Anytime you do that integral, remember, it's like a bookend. Um, that is not how you want to lose points on the AP exam. Lose points because you don't know what you're doing. Don't lose points because you forget your DT. Um, let's see. This, I can't let the bottom be a U because then my DU would be a 2T and I can't make up a T. So this is not U substitution, uh, which makes me think that this is one of those inverse trig dudes. It's a 1 plus t squared with no root, that's tangent. So let's see, a squared and u squared. So a squared is 1, u squared is t squared. So a is 1, u is t. du is just a dt. So I just have this extra 60. So I'm going to pop the 60 out. Um, and this is going to be tangent inverse of u, which is t, from 0 to 1. So let's see, I need to do 60 tangent inverse of 1 minus 
tangent inverse of zero. And I'm kind of going all over the place. So that's 60. All right. So tangent inverse of one means where is tangent one? Well, that happens at a lot of places. Like if you think of your unit circle, tangent one is here and here, which pi over four and phi pi over four, because in quadrant two and four, it would be negative. And I want a positive one. So, and then you could keep going around the circle or you could go backwards. I mean, you've got lots of angles where tangent's gonna be one. So how do you know which one to pick? Well, my integral is from zero to one. So um, now when I say one, I mean like one, like a clean one. So pi over four, I'm gonna grab my calculator just to prove a point, but pi over four, I know pi is three and some change, pi divided by four is 0.785 which is in between zero and one. So that's how I know I want him. Whatever you pick in here has to be inside that integral. So pi over four minus, okay, now tangent zero. Okay, tangent is y over x. So for that to be zero, my y would need to be zero, which happens here and here. But again, I need to be in between zero and one. This is pi, which is, three and some change. So that's way past a one. So I have to go with the zero. And then, so that's going to be 60 pi over four. So 15 pi. Okay. 15 pi what? How much air in cubic feet? Cubic feet. So I mean, you talk about a problem that encompasses a lot. Number one, knowing what the knowing that you need to set up an integral. Number two, it's got the inverse trig diff, um, integration. And then number three, it's got the inverse trig on the unit circle, like plugging stuff in and making sure you pick the right one. I mean, it's got units of measurement. It's got everything. That's a great, great problem. Um, a chemical flows into a storage tank at a rate of, okay, so that is a rate, liters per minute. T is the time in minutes, and we're going for 60 minutes. Find the amount of chemical that flows into the tank during the first 20 minutes. Okay, so no initial values. I'm not starting with some already in the tank, so I'm starting at zero uh, with a value of zero, and I'm going for the first 20 minutes. So from zero to 20 of 180 plus 3t. Okay, now let's use good units of measurement or good notation. I can't do this because that just puts the dt on the 3t. I need to do that in parentheses. Number one, to show that you're integrating the whole thing and number two, to show that your dt um, goes to the whole thing. Um, okay, so I can integrate this. This is easy. 180t plus 3 over 2t squared from 0 to 20. So now I'm going to plug in uh, 20. So 180 times 20 plus 3 over 2. 20 squared is 400. And this very, very easily could be a no calculator. So you've got to be comfortable multiplying large numbers. Okay. Minus, plug in a 0, it's going to wipe both those out. Okay, so 180 times 20. Well, I know it's going to have two zeros on the end of it. And 18 times 2 is 36. So 3,600. All right, divide up. That gives me 200. Multiply back. That gives me 600. And add those two together, and you get 4,200. 4,200 what? Now, be careful. Don't look back up there and say, ooh, liters per minute. This 4,200 is not a rate. This is the amount of the chemical, so this would just be liters. All right, calculator active. So here, um, yeah, this we have to focus on the setup, but this is where we're going to focus on how to type it in. So here we go. In a marathon, when the winner crosses the finish line, many runners are still on the course, some quite far behind. If the density of runners x miles from the finish line is given by that monster runners per mile how many are within the eight, within eight miles of the finish line 
within eight miles. Okay, so I want to go zero to eight of this function. Dx. And that's all connected, so that's all good. Okay. So here we go. Grab your calculator. And go to your integral. All right, I want to go from 0 to... All right, hold on. I have an 80. 0 to 8... Yeah, okay, sorry, 0 to 8 of, all right, now i got a 20, and then I've got a bracket, so I'm just going to use parentheses, 1 minus cosine of 1 plus 0.03x squared. Now, I just typed in cosine, and that makes me think, okay, I need to make sure I'm in radians, because this is trig. So I check up at the top, and I am, I'm in radians. Um, and then I need to close that parentheses. And I need one more closure, right? I have one, two, three on the left, and one, two, three on the right. And then that's a dx. There we go. So within eight miles, there should be approximately 166 runners. Um, you're going to be accurate to, let's go four decimal places. Um, so 166.3957, 166.3957, okay, what are they? How many runners? So that's how many runners are within eight miles of the finish line. They gave me the density of runners from the finish line. And so I found the accumulation that are within those first eight miles. Okay, I've got a block of ice. It's melting at that rate. How much ice melts during the first three minutes? Try it. Set it up. Go to your calculator. Try it. Pause me. Unpause me when you're done. I do not need parentheses around the top because it's only one term, but I do need parentheses around the bottom. Close it. Close the integral. X. There you go. 39.5500. 39.55. Now you don't have to write the two zeros, but you do need to go four decimal places. So, but because they're zeros, you, you're totally fine going 39.55. But if you're super paranoid and want to show the four decimals, that is fine. Um, and this is cubic centimeters, how much ice melts. That's going to be a volume. So cubic centimeters. Okay, so guys, 10 through 14 are all calculator active, but I start to um, introduce initial amounts. So like stuff has already happened and then it's gonna keep happening. So what I want you to do is I'm gonna go like super fast through these. So what I would love for you to do is pause me now and do this whole side right here, 10 through 14, then hit play and watch me go through these like really fast um, and then and you can check yours, okay? Pause me. Okay, this one contains 800 gallons already. So 800 plus, we're going 20 minutes. 31 minus e to the negative 0.16 t dt and the answer is gallons now no decimal here because it said to the nearest gallon 
Number 11, initially weighed 14 pounds. We're going, you received a 10 week old. Okay, so I'm not going from zero to 15. I'm going from 10 to 15 because I got him when he was 10 weeks old and I want to know what he is at 15. O oh, one two five T D T. Make sure you have good notation. I got nineteen point eight four six pounds. And if any of these you're having trouble typing it into your calculator, take a picture of what you're typing in and send it to me, and I'll be happy to try to troubleshoot where where it's going wrong. Number twelve between one and five seconds. Hundred and twenty four <laughs> slow down. So by how many feet per second does the monorail slow down? So this is a rate feet per second. Twenty four feet per second is how much it slows down. Uh, number thirteen. Number of liters. Initially, the tank contained 14 liters of oil, right? And express from use from the amount of oil after 10 minutes, and it's leaking. So, minus from 0 to 10, a 0.26 T DT. I got one liter. How much oil is in the tank after 10 minutes? Um, and, guys, it makes sense that that's a clean number because. If you're going to, was it a clean number? Yeah, because you're multiplying by 10. Yeah, so it's going to make it a non-decimal. Okay. And then number 14, ooh, that's a big one. Um, 225 plus 0 to 24, 1 over 80, 800 plus 26t minus t squared dt. And I got 501 gallons. There you go. All right. Last three. If F is the antiderivative, okay, so F is the integral. Antiderivative is the integral the opposite of a derivative integral. If f is the antiderivative of that function such that f of 1 equals 6, find f of 5. Okay, so guys, what it's saying is f of 1, the integral of 1 is already known, and that's a 6, and I want f of 5. So think about this kind of like an area. I know, remember, f is the integral, which is the total area under the curve. So f of 1 is 6. Here's what that means. The integral all the way up to 1 is already a 6. That's my initial value. But now I need to carry it on and I want to go to 5, but I need to start at 1 because this covers everything up until 1. So now I need to go from 1 to 5 wrote that wrong. Here we go. F of 1 is 6, initial condition. That means all the area up to 1 is a 6. And I want to, I really want F of 5, which means all the area up to 5. Well, I'm going to start at 6, and then I can pick up at 1 and go to 5. And I got... 6.667. Type that in, um, and I don't know what, it's not, no units of measurement there. Type that sucker in. Don't take my word for it. Make sure you know how to type this in on your calculator. Okay, number 16. A city located beside a river has a rectangular boundary as shown in the figure below. Okay, so here's the river. Um, the population density, so this is kind of like that runner problem. Um, eight miles from the finish line. The population density of the city at any point along a strip X miles from the river's edge. 
Okay, so the strip, guys, is going this way because it's X miles away from the river's edge. So X represents the miles from the river. Okay, is F of X persons per square mile? Which of the following expressions gives the population of the city? Okay, take a second and look at your answers. Okay. Hopefully, you've gotten it down to B or E. So I either need to integrate from 0 to 4, or I need to integrate from 0 to 7, and then I need to multiply that by either 7 or 4. Okay, so think about this. If I'm, if, look at these different x's. These represent all the values from 0 to 4. So we could take the area here, and that would be, that far away from the river or we could take the area right here and it would be that far away from the river so i'm going from zero to four but then that is seven strips wide or seven units wide so i need to multiply that by seven that's why the seven is outside the biggest thing, um, the biggest, and I think this is from an old AP exam, um, the, the biggest clue I can give you here is think about what's changing. The 7 doesn't change. The 7 doesn't change. It's the miles away from the river that are going to change. This expression gives um, the population density of a city at any point along a strip X miles from the river's edge. So if this is my river, then my distance here is x, and that distance can go from 0 to 4. And that's how I know those are my lowers and my uppers. Okay. Oh, this is one of my favorite problems. At an outdoor concert, the crowd stands in front of the stage filling a semicircular disc of radius 100 yards. Okay, stage. Okay, then we have... A semicircle and they're not going to give you a drawing for this they're going to expect that you understand what that means semicircular disc of radius 100 yards so from here to here is 100 yards the approximate density of the crowd x yards from the stage is given by that thing and that's in people per square yard about how many people are at the concert Okay, the number of people there are going to equal the area times the density. Area times the density. Area times the density. Okay, so I need to start thinking about, um, I know that this is the density. Okay, so that's going to go there. But now I need area. Well, this is a circle. So um, area of a circle, well, no, 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 not area of a circle. Think about this. We're going to think about area in terms of slices. So my slices, though, aren't going to be um, straight strips like they were for the river problem. My slices are semicircles. Because when it says um, x yards from the stage, that's a radius. So there's 5 yards from the stage. Well, you know what? So is that. Then I'm going to go 12 yards from the stage. Well, so are they. So the slices that I'm taking, so if you think about this like a Riemann sum, these aren't rectangles. It's like a rainbow. And each slice is a strip that's in a semicircular form. So don't think area of the circle. Think about each slice. And each slice is a circumference. It's like a strip around the edge of that particular circle, depending on how far away from the stage you want to be. 
Well, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, but I only have half a circle. So the circumference of my half a circle is pi r. So when we say area, I'm going to put strips. Just like we did on the river problem, we thought about it in terms of strips. Okay. So I'm going to go, let's see, 100 yards long. So I'm going from 0 to 100 because I need to count every strip from 0 yards to 100 yards. I need to, I need to count all these semicircle circumferences. And then I'm going to multiply it by the density that's in that strip, which is by that function. Because remember, this function has an x in it. So it varies based on how far away from the stage you are. So the farther away from stage you are, the more people are going to be in that strip because that strip is bigger. So that, that strip is going to hit more people. So I'm going to do pi x, because I can't have an r, can't type an r into my equation. So pi x times 20 over 2 root x plus 1. Now this guy was already an x. And x is defined as the yards from the stage, which, guys, is my radius. Like I said, these are all radiuses. So r and x are the same, are, are represent the same variable. Okay? Uh, and then I need a dx for good notation. And now I'm going to go type this bad boy in. So go type them in with me. Here we go. We'll do this one together. Let's see, I'm going from 0 to 100 of pi x parentheses 20 divided by, top does not need parentheses, the bottom does, square root of x, get out from under the square root, plus 1. Close the bottom, close the density part, 1, 2, 3 on the left, 3 on the right, there we go. Well, it took a second to think. That was big stuff for this little calculator. So there are 19,506.3227 people at this concert. So the number of people is the strips times the density. The strips times the density. And my strips here vary. The strips in the river problem didn't vary. All the strips were seven miles. That's why you had a constant seven out there. These strips are variable. They are circumference. They'll start real small and get bigger. And that's why it's the pi x times the density. Okay? So the strips for the river problem, just to clarify, are like this. Because they go from here to here. Well, the width of those strips is all seven. So it is still like um, strips times density. Well, the density is f of x. And the area of my strips is 7 from 0 to 4. And that's why and they just pop the 7 out front. So same format, 16 and 17, same format. But 17 strips change. 16 strips don't change. Okay, guys, this is not super difficult. But, I mean, there's still, like, thinking that has to go involved. It's not so much about your number crunchy. It's about, do you understand what the problem is asking? And can you set it up? And then, yeah, can you type it into your calculator correctly? So make sure you're good there.